Hey guys, Mashiachosaurus here, and tonight we are doing one of my favorite games. So, I like Metroid. Um, I've played several Metroid games, uh, but this one is probably my favorite. This is Metroid Prime. Okay. Yeah, well, this is animation too. I think we're gonna go ahead and start. Um, if you're wondering about the Metroid Fusion connection bonuses, if you have a completed game of Metroid Fusion and you use a Game Boy Link cable to link it up to this game, you can unlock using the Fusion suit in this game. Um, it's kind of stupid. Thing. Yeah. Being a Metroid fan. And if you have a completed game of Metroid Prime and you link it to Metroid Fusion, you can play the original Metroid uh, on your GBA, which, to be perfectly honest, has not uh, aged super well. Metroid Prime takes place after the original game, but before Metroid 2, I guess? So, very atmospheric game, uh, which I don't know if you noticed, but I really like atmospheric games. Now, I have played Metroid Prime a lot, and I've beaten it a lot. Uh, I'm going to be shooting for 100% uh, on this run. Um, I'm not sure that I'll hit that, because it has been a very long time, but that's my goal. Samus can do keep the high jump, Jesus. Okay. So. Hold L to lock onto targets. Yep. How do I? Oh, yeah. Coming back to me here. Okay. So then. That one is just high enough that you have to use the R stick. Or the, the R triggers stick stuff. I'm used to uh, PC controls at this point, so like, forgive me if I mess the controls up a lot on here. Okay. Deck Alpha, emergency evacuation area, current status, environment unstable. Deck Gamma, reactor core and propulsion, current status, environment normal. That's good. And that's here. So, uh, you got to do a lot of scanning in this game. 
scanning is a huge part of it. And some people don't like that. Um, personally, I don't mind it. But okay, so we're re we're repressurized. Come on. Okay, so this is our first creature's entry, and it is the Parasite. Uh, indigenous to Talon 4, single parasite is harmless to larger life forms. However, they tend to travel in large groups, swarming over potential prey. Such swarms can be dangerous. Now, if we go to our status screen, like this is our inventory, but if we go over here to our logbook. Oh, sorry. Let's do that again. Creatures. And you see, we got a lot of empty entrance entries in here. And there's Parasite. And if you ever want to look at it, you can review it. Over here is options. Oh. I don't think we need to do any. Don't think we need to do this. Alright, so this is a space pirate. Death caused by a severing of the spinal cord. Biohazardous material phase on batch, destination de de beta. Uh, phase on batch, destination deck beta. We don't know what phase on is yet. Escape pod entrance, the vessel has already been jettisoned. Evacuation occurred six hours prior to our And analysis shows incredibly large muscle structure surrounding the jaw area. Fluid sacs containing acid are also detected. So platform does not look like it can be activated from this room. And high levels of radiation detected. Unknown. So... We want to go ahead and scan everything we can in this room. Another dead pirate uh, caused by acid burns. And death caused by severe flame damage to exoskeleton. That's cool. And two more little critters. Okay. Weak life signs detected. Imprints of large bite marks seen on exoskeleton. Okay, so he's still alive. So that problem is solved. Escape pods launched. Tail section for just a mouth-like mouth orifice, most likely used for birthing offspring. So yeah, whatever this thing is, it's it is very much a big monster. Escape pod launch coordinates. Talent for research command center. Although this debris is obstructing the hallway, it looks like it can be easily removed. And this space pirate died from excessive blunt trauma to the head. This is basically the tutorial dungeon. If it wasn't obvious already. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead. Oops. Wrong way. We're gonna enter morph ball mode. 
And this is actually a missable scan here. Uh, research entry, map station. Walk into the map station, the hologram to download a map of the area. And you can only scan these before you get them. Um, if you get every map station in the game before you scan them, then you can never get that scan. Uh, free good exterior hull, stable and fully functional. That's cool. Talon 4, ground zero area secure, greater radiation readings. I like reading normal. Two parasite queen specimens have become volatile on deck beta. All security personnel should report to the biotech research area. Parasitic infestation has been detected in the ventilation systems of decks gamma and beta. Uh, all good things to know, but uh, give me my map. So this game actually has one of the like few good 3D maps of its era, and basically all good 3D maps from video games are modeled after this one. Uh, it's it's actually kind of like sensible and easy to follow. Uh, yes, Luna, welcome to the show, and yes, we are doing Metroid Prime, the first one. I'll probably do the second one as well at some point. Um, the second one's not as good, but it's still fun. I, I have thoughts on that one. Okay, platform actives. Now, I do want to point out... If I can get it to happen. See that little uh, smoke effect from my gun? Um, little things like that got removed in the Wii uh, uh, Prime Trilogy port. So that kind of sucks. Specimen containment breach on deck beta, all crews report for lockdown. And this energy conductor unit may have been damaged, you think? Use caution when approaching the arcing electricity. Again, you think? Roll through here. Hold it. This game hides its uh, loading screens through the door mechanisms, so, you know, they don't always work super well. Uh, morphology unknown. Low life signs detected. This creature seems to be in a state of stasis hibernation. Well, I won't bother. Specimen cell A, status hibernation, transference or phase on badge, something complete. We don't know what phase on is. Specimen cell C, status unknown, rejection of phase on compound detected. Entrance to the blah, 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 blah. Definitely a wordy game, so be prepared for that. Specimen cell B, status unknown, rejection of phase on compound detected. Okay, Space Pirates. Severe internal damage detected. So, uh... Not a problem. Okay, thank you. Space Pirates status. Both legs of this creature are broken. Oh, well, that's a shame, buddy. Now you got bigger problems. Uh, let's do this here, uh, in order. Parasite egg in pupil state. Its tough exoskeleton protects it from its mother's acidic embryonic fluid. Damn. The fluid sacs in the mouth enlarge after mutation. This allows for increased production of corrosive bile. Like a Republican, am I right, folks? After mutation, the carapace of the larva becomes rigid. The carapace is quite resilient, able to resist the attacks of many predators. That's good to know. And combat mutation applications are complete. The primary legs of the creature possess galvanized tips, allowing it to penetrate any known alloy. Well, that certainly seems like it was a worthwhile endeavor and not crazy. The coils of this ventilation cap look hard stable. Well, so do I, but you need to about it. Okay. So, 
Okay, another new entry. Uh, these are hard to find later in the game, but you can still find them, I think. Um, this is an auto-defense turret. New research entry, missile ammunition. Supplies of the same. This stuff is relevant, I don't think. Ballistic support me needed in specimen block F. Come on. There we go. Okay. Phase on infusion stage 3. Mutation initiated. Larva status stable. Uh, this specimen has been horribly mutated. No life readings. So it's just a corpse. Pirate data! New category for our one. Space pirate encrypted data decoded. Log 09.992.3. Sebus has fallen. I'm not real sure on how that's supposed to be pronounced. Um, I think it's supposed to be Zebus. Um, I would think that Zebus would be more correct, but uh, whatever. Uh, all ground personnel are presumed dead, either killed by the hunter clad in metal, that's us, or the subsequent destruction of the underground facilities. Our research frigates Orpheon, Syriacus, Syriacus, and Vol Paragon were in orbit at zero hour and managed to retreat. Frigate Orpheon is now docked at Vortex Outpost. Orpheon's cargo appears to have a 100% survival rate. Metroids are healthy, but on restricted feeding schedules due to uncertain supply status. We are ready to begin research on the Metroids and other promising life forms. Security status remains at code blue. No sign of pursuit from the hunter. So, if you're not familiar with the plot of the Metroid games, uh, Planet Zebus is where uh, Samus first encountered Metroids and the Space Pirates and all that stuff. And, uh, she ended up blowing it up. That was in the first game. Or in Zero Mission, if you, you know, want to do that one. And I probably will play Zero Mission at some point, because it's actually a pretty decent uh, game in its own right. But, uh, so, following that, uh, we now go to this game, where the uh, space pirates are retreating. The Metroids are powerful uh, alien, uh, alien life forms that the space pirates are trying to turn into weapons. And that's really all you need to know with this dungeon. Phazon, infusion stage two. Introducing mutagen into tank. Status complete. Phazon, infusion stage one. Uh, okay, so I'm reading this in reverse order here. Uh, so. Okay, I just disabled a, print, a defense turret. I didn't even need to do that, but you can do that sometimes. You can find things that'll turn off the turrets, which is cool. Uh, parasitic larva info. Harmless unless encountered in large numbers. What do you got? Infusion stage 4, larval diagnostic, cell structure failures. You can see that, like, they, they started it, and everything was going fine until it hit stage 4, and then stage 4, it just, uh, Everything went to shit. This right here is a plasmite, a native of Talon 4. Uh, we will see those later. Specimen solitary holding 1, phase on level unknown status, xenotropic life form unstable and use caution. Uh, that picture right there is a side hopper, a monster from the uh, original Metroid game. Uh, and there aren't actually any side hoppers in Metroid Prime. So we won't actually encounter that set. Uh, but it's a pretty cool callback uh, to the classic Metro games. This was the first 3D Metro. Um, specimen cell structure failing. Batch 0732.c does not match DNA. Terminating infusion sequence. So... You can see that it's all just like bones and stuff. Is this... Oh yeah, that's just another plasmite. Fusion analysis 10.2. Specimens exhibit incredible strength and body mass increase when exposed to phase on batch 0732.c. 
Infusion analysis 12.5. Phasia batch 0003.h increases the acid production of the saliva ducts of parasite larvae. So, whatever this phason is, it mutates things, and they were using it to uh, turn these parasites into uh, bioweapons. Experiment 435.8 Bioform pain tolerance levels at 13% and holding. Elevator operational, step into the holiday, yeah, I'll do that in a second. You may notice that some of these are red and some of these are orange. Uh, red indicates something that's important. Orange indicates something that just is kind of for your information. Biohazard waste, waste removal may begin in three hours. Phase on radiation readings must be reported to Deck Commander before batch disposal. So, yeah. Come up here. There's that turret. Hey, another, uh... Another fun boy. Uh, severe internal damage detected. Yeah, this is gonna get worse. Zoomer, native of Talon 4. Plated Parasite, native of Talon 4. Solidary Holding, Phase on Level Toxic, Medic Seal Holding. War Wasp, native of Talon 4. Shooting. Okay, brain hemorrhage detection. Creatures aim will be hindered. Avoid damage by using quick movement. Whoa, 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 what are we doing? Don't. That is not what I wanted to do. Come back up there. Okay, minimal injuries on this one, maximum firepower, and use caution. It's okay. New research, small energy, replenishes 10 points. Cool. So, this is the War Wasp, in case you wanted to see what it looks like. We will be seeing several more of them. It's another War Wasp. Uh, Another solitary holding, solitary holding, plasmite, shrink bat, okay, so that central thing has the phase on it. Acid burns have welded the joints of the exoskeleton. That's gruesome and awesome. And uh, by the way, if you charge your beam, then uh, you draw things in. So yeah, these are all just uh, tanks of mutagen. Ice Shriek Bat. So, this is actually a rare scan, but uh, we don't officially get the creature scan here. Like, it doesn't give us any of the info on the creature yet. Ice Shriek Bat is one of the ones that's hard to get. I'll show you why when we get to that point. Okay. These things give you more information. Ventilation covers may become superheated if airflow is restricted. Unusual thermal readings will be reported to the deck engineer on duty. Obstruction detected, detected in reactor ventilation system. Engineering crews report to freight lift corridor immediately. Oh, 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 that disappeared. Security codes on auto. Defense turrets are, cycle, are changed every other lunar cycle. Using improper codes may result in turret activation. That is good to know.
Another space pirate that's dead. Death caused by severe lacerations to the abdomen. Scan this thing. We get access to Deck Gamma, which we can do by stepping into this. And then we just ride this elevator down. Dead pirates. Ah, door lock enabled. You gotta insert a metallic shape. Uh, death caused by removal of internal organs. That will do it. Energy now flows through series locking mechanisms. Blah blah blah. And a spherical shape inflated this claim. I don't know why the space pirates build all of their equipment to work with Samus' suit so perfectly, but they do. Death caused by acid burns to the face. Again, that'll do it. Uh, severe lacerations, partially eaten, I mean, we've all been there, right? Uh, cranial trauma, yeah, door lock it Uh, creature struggled to get through the door. We're first gonna go over here, and get another research scan. Save station, step into these stations to save the game and fully restore your energy. Nice. So, we're trying to figure out exactly what happened here, and the picture is starting to become clear that they were working on some kind of bioweapon program, and things just went horribly, horribly wrong. And that is why the ship is just an ass load of fucking dead pirates and stuff. No life signs detected. Still contain a heat signature, so they haven't been here long. And, uh, large amounts of blood missing from the carcasses as well. I mean, may have been used for nourishment, patent consistent with predator behavior. Okay. Let's get real here, folks. Boss fight time. So, you don't need to scan her to uh, fight her, but it does make it easy. Uh, plus, this is the only chance you'll ever get to scan this monster. Parasite Queen. Parasite female, genetically enhanced by unknown means. A weak spot has been detected in this creature's mouth. So you use your auto targeting to acquire this new target. If you don't do the scan, you have to target the like main body and it takes a to kill it. Scans indicate the presence of a potent mutagen, origins unknown. The creature exhibits the ability to acquire weapon grade blasts of energy from its mouth. A trait not present in the standard parasite genome. Think? It appears the, Paris, the pirates have begun a bioengineering program with considerable results. Yeah, I'd say so. So, if you want to dodge, which uh, does that, you have to shoot through these, the, the gaps in these blue things, because they will block the shots. And I could be using missiles to make this go faster. Frankly, it's not necessary. This is the tutorial boss, so like... There we go. So 
Sounds like a plan. So, reactor core is critical. You can scan some of this stuff, but it basically just says, like, hey, you gotta get on the ball. Um, and that timer on the ground there, in the lower part of our uh, view, that is how much time you have before this whole thing explodes. And Haha, take that from your defense to it. Okay. So that thing got out. Try to kill it. I'm gonna leave. Keep shooting past me, buddy. Okay, remember that thing about the metal caps? Here. I think he's just, yeah, he's just parasites. Some of these swarm creatures are different scans. Parasites pretty much don't uh, do anything, they just slow you up. I think they can do like a little bit of damage. Gotta weave and bob through these tunnels and get our asses out of here. These are nice vents though, like jeez. Like, usually you got crawls in here, but these are nice installations. Okay. Sometimes you may get flashes of Samus's eyes behind the visor and stuff. But this game is full of really cool atmospheric effects, like the condensation that just appeared on the visor. Tracks all the way and then it goes back. You gotta get to this door. And we're off again. Open. Okay. And that's Ridley, or rather, better Ridley. Uh, a classic villain from the series, but not from uh, And he's a fucking dragon, and he's cool. This is the grapple beam, and that's basically the only tutorial you ever get on using it. Don't get too attached. Hey, I made a fun. Uh -huh. Yep. Access granted. Then parts of the ship complode. And our suit got dumped. So at this point, we're uh, like a bunch of our uh, upgrades are knocked offline, like the gravel beam that we just used. Can't get them back until later. So, move our way through. Oh, not that way. Let's go through this one. Uh, yeah, depressurize on it. Because it's an airlock. There we go. You should remember this.
unfortunately, we've lost Edward Ridley, so we need to go down to the ground and start searching on foot. Or search on DB. Exactly. And this is where the game proper begins. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Talon 4. Research entry on our gunship. You return to your ship to recharge energy, reload weapons, and save products. It does all three. The creature's entry Tangleweed. It's a plant with basic sentience. Tangleweeds are only dangerous to small organisms. They're covered in tiny barbs designed to trap potential meals. Tangle weeds lack the strength to do anything more than hinder larger life forms. So, like, you can get this missile expansion when you have the morph ball. If you shoot at these, they'll go away for a little bit, but they'll come back out. You can't actually kill them. Talon fern, non toxic variety of Celo talonesis, common with alimony water sources. Music in the overworld here is a remix of uh, the theme from the original Metro. So, that's good. Okay, two creatures actually. A seedling. Dorsal spines eject self defense. More like offense. Oh, right, I don't have much on So you can see that these things slow you down a bit. The Impact Crater. Okay, pirate data. Log 10.308.0. Field team reports are in on an aged structure of alien design built on the surface of Talon Force. To show that the structure projects a containment field, this field bars access to a prime source of energy within a deep crater. The science team believes the field is powered by a number of strange Chozo artifacts. We have found some of these relics and studies on them have begun, as this field could hinder future energy production operations on Talon 4, we must dismantle it as soon as possible. If this means the destruction of the Chozo artifacts, it will be done. And can't go through here because blast shield and missiles. That's okay. Uh, rooms will not reset until you go one more room beyond. Them. There's some other areas we can get to from here, but uh, we're not going to bother with them right now. We're just going to go on to where we're supposed to be. Beetle. Burrowing insect with a resilient carapace. Extremely aggressive. Insect's man massive mouth enables it to tumble through solid rock at high speeds. Above ground, beetles can cover short distances rapidly. They attack anything that moves near their lair. Now, uh, they'll do a little skittering dance left and right before they charge, and that tells you that they're going to charge. So, 
Saturnine. Small iridescent mushrooms typically go, go, go that grows in dank, dark rooms. Guide stem. Pervasive indigenous species of bioluminescent weed. So yeah. A lot of information here about like the general ecology and stuff of the world. Uh oh. Sap sack. Chemical reaction within sack produces violent explosion when agitated. Because of its irresistible odor and sweet nectar, the sap sack was nearly eaten out of existence. The evolution of an explosive chemical sap saved it. Now only brave or ingenious creatures dare to develop it. It does that. And there's a new research entry, a large energy worth 20 points a month. Uh oh, another new creature. Blast cap. Volatile chemicals within this weed's toxic fungal cap may explode if agitated. The poisonous flesh of the bad blast cap helps keep it from being eaten. It also detonates its fungal cap when it senses even slight contact. This is a zoomer. Anchors itself to walls and other surfaces. Avoid contact with spikes. A basic nerve center located directly above the mandibles. Detects nutrients. Sharp spines protect it from casual predators. But the lack of a reinforced carapace makes it vulnerable to indirect attacks. Like laser fire. Oh, but what's this? Gamer. Wall crawling mollusk with retractable spikes. The gamer is an evolutionary offshoot of the zoomer family. When threatened, it extends lethal spikes and retracts its head deep into its armored carapace. Can't actually uh, destroy it with just your gun. You need something heavy. Lichen seems to be giving off a lot of variations. Another new creature, a blood flower. It ejects toxic spores. Toxins are poisonous even to the blood flower itself. Three mouth nodules protrude from the stalk beneath the flower, each with a rudimentary brain cluster and the ability to spew toxic fumes at anything within a five meter radius. The spores ejected from the stigma at the center of the flower are sufficient to kill the creature if they explode its vicinity. For instance, if you do that. And there's another blast door. So, you can't go that way. Not gonna lie, the, uh, the, the beetles are beetles. Shozo Ruins West. Another loading screen masking elevator sequence. And this is the Chozo Ruins. The Chozo are the aliens who adopted Samus when she was just a little wee tot. Oh, seismic disturbance at the ruins site? If you've got the health help system turned on, you'll occasionally get uh, messages like that, um, and it'll tell you, like, uh, you know, what uh, what your next goal is. I will be right back after a moment, uh, and so hold on, folks.
By the way, for anybody who is playing this on actual hardware, I do want to point out that Metroid Prime is one of the games that looks absolutely garbage on actual hardware these days. Not because of the game, but because it was never meant to be played with a high-def TV. And it won't uh, look good on the new high-def smart TV. Um, everything will end up looking blurry. Unless you're one of the lucky few who get their hands on a GameCube HDMI cable. They did make them, but they're very hard to find. Uh, these pillars have collapsed from erosion. Carbon dating cannot determine the age of the structures because carbon dating doesn't work like that. And this is our first Chozo lore. At the highest point of our city lies the fountain, a wellspring of pure water that flows throughout our civilization. It is the jewel of the Chozo, the life giver, and yet its waters speak of a clouded future. As we come to understand the paths of time and space more clearly, we have begun to glimpse through rough pattern or we have begun to glimpse rough tatters of past and future, glittering behind reality like soft lights behind a curtain. We have seen the fountain in these glimpses, pouring darkness instead of water. And we cannot guess what the visions mean. Here we are in the Chozo ruins. So, yeah. Passageway to Shrine. I don't know if you can hear that weird pulsing hum. Uh, that is the indication that there is a power up nearby. Specifically, in this case, come on. Specifically, in this case, uh, inside that right there, you know, cap. Yeah, my shots keep bouncing off of. We will get that later. Do not get to the shrine because of that. Up there is another missile expansion, but we can't get to it because we can't jump high enough. Ah, well. And up there is another item. We'll get that later. For right now, let's go this way. New creature, Scarab. Exploding parasites that can embed their bodies in solid rock. Scarab thinks no or scarabs think nothing of sacrificing themselves for the safety of their swarm. When a hostile life form is sighted, they block its progress by embedding themselves in floors and walls. Embedded scarabs violently self-destruct when threatened. So, yeah. Kind of an annoyance. Uh-oh. Ion. Immobile organisms entirely composed of ocular tissue. Okay, that seems weird. Capable of launching sustained energy beams when active, the ion is sensitive to light and will close shut if a bright flash ignites nearby. So, you can't kill them with the power beam, but if you shoot them, they will go dormant. Another Chozo lore. We Chozo are departing now, after so many years of peaceful seclusion here on Talon 4. When we came, this place was a refuge for our spirits, a civilization built from native materials bereft of the trappings of our technology. We were linked to the land here, kindred to the plants and animals, far away from the machines we had become so dependent on. And so we leave it now, pristine, 
a testament to the mortal forms we no longer need. We have drawn the veils of time and space aside and are withdrawing beyond the illusion. But we will never forget this, the most sacred of our homes, and we will remain ever watchful. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And high concentrations of poison. Elevated Texas and tree bark. Poisoned water source within four meters of the tree base. Got it. Oh no, a war wasp hive. Primary war wasp dwelling, only vulnerable to heavy weaponry. War wasps build their homes over existing crevices using whatever materials are close to hand. They carry building fragments back to the construction site with their forelegs and glue them into place with adhesives secreted from their abdomens. Good to know. Uh, you can destroy these, but again, not with power. And again, you probably hear that humming. That is coming from... From right there. So that's another uh, bomb oh, expansion. All right, here we go. War wasp, airborne insect equipped with a venomous stinger capable of shearing steel. The war wasp rarely strays far from its hive unless it is pursuing an immediate threat. It attacks with no regard for its own survival, dive bombing its enemy with stinger extended. Fast working toxins from the stinger can incapacitate most small organisms. Yep. Where are you at? There you are. Okay. So they come out of these, and they will eventually return, I think, and respawn. Um, I want to go over here first. This is again the save station. This is the one the map alerted me to. I'm leaving the uh, hint guides on because it has been a really, really long time since I played this. But uh, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of it. These are more scarabs. Chozo sculpture crafted in honor of Talon Star. And the only thing translatable here is Chozo. They were pretty full of themselves, I guess. Petrified organic matter looks like a rock carved into the shape of it. So, obviously, like, a long dead iron. Stress points present in Brimstone Wall, a concussive blast may shatter it. And in fact, a concussive blast will shatter it. We don't have missiles, though. There's also this tunnel here. And a door here. We can't access any of that stuff. So we're just going to proceed onward. Plasmite. Uh, they're attracted to sources of heat, thriving on energy, emit light when hunting, and expel small bursts of thermal energy when threatened. So we want to kind of not have to deal with them, so we want to kill them. These crates you can shoot open. I don't think they're a research on I probably should have uh, checked that. And you'll notice the little warning thing. That's indicating that... Uh, this water air is toxic and will do damage to me if I fall in. Interesting, interesting. And 
then what's this? Okay. Elevated bridge, good, yep. Drainage. Light formed architect. Okay. Oh my. This is really easy to miss. You only will encounter these creatures in this fight. A ram war wasp. It looks exactly like a war wasp, except a slightly different color, and it behaves completely differently. Uh, it circles its prey, then strikes. War wasps are the only species on Talon 4 to evolve a true hive mind. Nesting in dark, damp places, ram war wasps emerge in small groups when threatened and circle their enemy at high speed, disorienting. Striking from all sides as a single intelligence, they can fell these organisms. So... You want to eliminate the war wasps. That's the gimmick of this one. You have a radar behind me. And those little yellow dots are bad things. Honestly, this fight isn't too go. Like I said, that's a really easy scan to miss because uh, they look just like normal war wasps. You will never find another one. Okay, now we've got this. That means that we can blow stuff up. This is an energy tank. That gives us 100 more health. Now that we have the missile launcher, and our way out is now open, we can go back and get some of the stuff that we missed. I 
check. Okay, that's five more missiles right off the bat. Map station. Not bad. So this is the map of the Chozo Ruins. This is where we came in. And all of these blue areas are areas we have not yet explored. And there's a lot of them. I think our next goal is right here. So let's make for that. As soon as I remember how to jump. Hut. Yes, yes. I very quickly get tired of uh, being careful around all these things. I will stop and see. We just got a new upgrade. Let's head down this path. How dare I think I was about to get a nice thing. guns. If Triceratops was a big stink bug. Plated Beetle, well-armored burrowing insect, vulnerable only in the rear abdomen, aren't we? <laughs> Creature's thick cranial plating can repel frontal attacks. This gives it an advantage in combat, allowing it to make ramming attacks. Only surfacing when it detects vibrations above, it then maneuvers itself so as to always face its rival, keeping its exposed abdomen protected. Yeah. Is that how you keep your abdomen protected?
Okay. Morph ball. It's morphin' time. Okay, this all looks like it should be Chozo lore, but it's not. And this right here can be broken, but not with the upgrades I'm trying to get. There's also areas that we could get to if only we had this, but we don't, so we won't find it. But with the Morph Ball, we can roll quickly through things. Bye, bugs. Bye, bugs. You don't need to fight everything in these Metroid games. In fact, usually you'll find yourself just running past them. And generally that's a good idea. There's no need for you to fight everything. Unless, of course, you think the alternative Fighting them, or of, uh, fighting them is worse. Such as the scarabs, which can often do quite a bit of damage. So you couldn't get through here without the morph bomb. Ah. Okay. That's our plasmite. There's a spider ball track there. Now, we're going to try not to kill these plasmites because they actually are lighting up the hill. Chozo lore. As we struggle with the great poison, something stirs at the edges of our vi visions. It is the hatchling Samus. We feel her across the void as she hunts the corrupted. Will our fates again be won? As our pride chatters, will prophecy become real? When all strength wanes from the Chozo, will it be the hatchling who fulfills our legacy? True sight eludes us, for the poison gnaws at all vision, leaving seers blind and filled with despair. Truth's blessing may come too late. And, uh, Fountain is choked by overgrowth, pilot and toxicity, and sorry, I just got into acid water. That's not good. Uh, we actually want. Uh, I'll, I'll kill that one. It's kind of hard. We want to go through. Here. Ah, crap! These were shriek bats. Uh, I will get another chance to get the scans of them. They're quite common enemies, but uh, you kind of have to be fast with them because, well, they die from the laser saw. Reaper Vine, powerful rock-dwelling tentacle. A single eye upon the Reaper Vine keeps a constant vigil, but its vision is limited to 10 meters. A scythe-like appendage on its tip is honed to lethal sharpness. The Reaper Vine will swing this blade wildly at anything that enters its zone of perception. That's how you deal with them, by shooting them, just like everything else. There's a door, or we can continue on uh, upwards a bit. Oh, there's another save station detected. Okay, so it actually is telling us to go down here. Let's, let's... Can do, buddy. Oh, where are we going to? This is a room I've been to many times. All right, another chance to get these shriek bats. Here we go, Territorial Stealing Dweller. Body temperature peaks at 121 centigrade. Shriek bats have high internal temperature, making them easy to spot with thermal imaging. They roost on cave ceilings while hunting for small prey. Fiercely territorial, they dive bomb anything that wanders near. That is true. Save station is right over here. Ok, 
There we go. Okay. Now, a bunch of fallen out pieces in. Yep. Too bad for them. I was ready for them. All of these blast caps. And you can see they leave behind a little one. Cool. Okay. Great poison comes from Talon's core. Good to know. If I ever visit the core, I'll be sure to note that. Toxicity levels critical. Contact with your contaminated waters hazardous. Good advice. That which follows the waters seeks the sun. Looky there! Another missile expansion. So we're already up to a max of 15 missiles. In this room, we want to hit all the runic symbols, so keep your eyes peeled for those. Ah, also try not to fall into the water and get burned by the acid like I just did. Number two. That's three. Right. And that's just saying that we have to hit those rune symbols to make this door open. And here we go. That's number four. Chorzo lore! Okay, we have returned to Talon 4, born here against our will by the Great Cataclysm from the reaches of space. A meteor came, casting a dark shadow of debris over this land with the violence of its impact. Though we perceived this from beyond space and time, it was but a curiosity, a brief flare in the infinite mar that march of the universe. But the meteor brought with it corruption. A great poison burst forth into the land, clawing at life with such violence that we were ripped from our peaceful state and find ourselves wandering as shadows of the mortal forms we left behind, searching for why we are here. These are not necessarily in order, but... Construction there. Hey, we can destroy these things now. That's great. And so now we leave. There is more to get in this room but we're not equipped for it. Come on. Weasel your way through the door, Sanus. Okay. Let's Shriek Bats have not respawned because we only went one room away. We are two rooms away for a respawn to happen. And now... Oh, can we get up this way? Put, put, put. 
Oh, that sucked. Well, let's get back up there. Because I think we can make this. We might... We might need the, the space jump. But I think we can make this without that. You can actually take a shortcut right here if, you know, good. Come on, Mashi. There. That's what shrink bats do. And there is stuff there that, again, we're not going to get There's a path underneath that you could take, but it requires bombs to open. We don't have bombs. Okay, lock system engaged. Security area to unlock the door. That is a resource. We need to unlock the doors. Okay, Stone Toad preys on creatures smaller than itself, vulnerable only from within. Stone Toad is able to remain still for days. It preys upon creatures smaller than itself, inhaling them whole. Anything it finds indigestible, it regurgitates. Stone Toads use their tusks as a last resort in combat. They actually will never use their tusks. Oops. Did not mean to launch a missile. Oh my. Incinerator drone, programmed for high temperature waste disposal. Despite device schematics indicate a high risk of malfunction when internal port power core is damaged, the unit has minimal combat programming that can defend itself if necessary. This drone's intense heat blast compensates we're a slack of battle pallets. Yeah. That's the part you gotta hit. And then he burns the boss of the nest. And we get another pallet swap of the war wasp, which again is super easy to miss. Barbed War Wasp, airborne instinct, insect with the ability to launch and stinger at prey. Highly aggressive member of the War Wasp family, this insect can propel the tip of its stinger up to 20 meters. The stinger tip regrows seconds after launch and contain an acidic compound designed to pre-digest the prey. Hey, Mephorus, good to see you made it. I'm not seeing Goria guy tonight. I don't know if he's 
feeling okay. He's been sick the last couple of uh, last couple of streams. Yeah. Big sick sucks. Okay, so now we have the morph ball bombs. And their gimmick is they can destroy things made of sandstone. And you can do a morph ball bomb jump with them. That's actually something that you're going to need to practice because you'll want to do the morph ball bomb jump a couple of times. For instance, to get out of here. If you check the inventory, by the way, which I haven't been doing um, because I know all this stuff, but if you check the inventory entries on these different upgrades, it'll tell you that, like, missiles can destroy brimstone objects. So. Oh, hey. A standard morph ball slot. Inserting the morph ball and detonating a bomb will cause these slots to send electrical impulses that can activate different types of devices. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, great. Energy spike detected. In the furnace. Okay. Now, the beeping, as you've probably guessed, indicates time puzzle. my chance. There we go. Seems like they give you a lot of time. They do, they're pretty generous with it. There we go. We're back to having pretty much Samus's standard of arsenal at our command. My copy, uh, my physical copy of Metroid Prime would often hang in this tunnel, by the way, so you know, if you're playing this on physical hardware. Maybe something to watch for. I don't know if it's something unique to my version or what. The meme was. Yeah, my my copy got destroyed in San So this is the furnace. But we won't be able to get into the furnace proper until we can climb up this. Just rolling around as a ball. Come on, Dora. And as you can see, now we can slide under all these traps. Nice effort there, guys. Ah, uh, no. I mean, it doesn't matter because we're going to get healed, but... There's a trick, by the way, to fire off uh, missiles faster by alternating between regular and missiles. 
but I don't use it because the game is easy enough as it is, at least on an easy setting. So now we have what we need to fight our first true boss. Like everything up to this point has been just preliminaries. Oh, hey, and there's a runic symbol down there. Let's go find it. Uh, so yeah, we, we've been doing the preseason stuff. It's time to do the actual playoffs. Got a runic symbol activated. These uh, red tangle weeds are a different creature, but like these particular ones will not be the Don't worry though, they're not. They're... Oh right, I'm trying to shoot that, but I need bomb. Them. Just normal war wasps. Nothing to see. Here. Here we go. Venom weed. Poisonous plant that attracts into ground water. Venom weeds evolve to thrive in the habits of uh, habitats of larger organisms. They lure prey with brightly colored leaves, then detain it with tiny barbs that deliver a powerful toxin. Venom weeds rapidly decompose anything that succumbs to their midst. So don't be something that succumbs to their midst. I just gotta remember where the last room symbol is. It's somewhere around here. Found it! Hello! A sandstone wall. Sandstone means bombs! Yep, incoming scan data, I know. Yep, the the source of the toxins is yeah. It's like I'm I'm like on my way there. I'm, I'm like two rooms away. Those things not only will they slow you down, but they'll also deal damage to you constantly while you're in the game. The venom. So it's a little. Uh, he, well, you just saw. It's a little more annoying than uh, the plain old tank. Here we go. This is the Chozo Ruins boss. Tentacle. Uh, analysis indicates that Flagra's central nervous system is located at the base of the structure. I'm trying to scan you. Just play this for some There we go. Fla I don't. I, I really have no idea how you're intended to pronounce this. Flagra. Uh, this mutant plant is a source of toxic water ruins. Its growth cycle has been radically accelerated. As a result, it requires near constant exposure to solar energy to remain active. This exposure has made its outer shell thick and durable. Its lower root system is unprotected and vulnerable, however. Exploit this flaw with possible. <coughs> Good advice. 
concentrated weapon fire can daze it for short periods. So, basically, it's, you want to shoot it until it's stunned enough to stop it. Then knock the mirror away, it will fall down and retract its tentacles. Head to the bomb slot, launch bomb. But now there's two. Rinse and repeat throughout the fight. Flogger has a couple of different attacks, such as whatever those are. It's mostly harmless, though. If you let it go too long, it will knock those back. Ah, which you just can't. And as you see, you don't necessarily need to stun it in order to do damage to it. That just makes it so much easier because you can try to knock the panels back and try to kill you. Go for three. Try to get too close with the tentacle in place, it will just swat you with the damage. Can we do one more time? This was the source of the pollution, so 
this will clean up all the water supply in the ruins, so from now on it won't be acidic to us, and we can actually, like, touch it and not die. Oh, and we get a glittering prize. We got our various suit bag with the really puffy shoulders. I like how it looks, but my god, that's gotta be impractical. It's like the most 80s of 80s power suit shoulders. Come on. So now, as you can see, water no longer hurts us. Why, what's this? Ultra energy. It's a hundred units. And a pulse bomb, excuse me, pulse bomb boo. Life form of raw energy. Periodically releases explosive segments from its body. Pulse Bamboos are energy beings, invulnerable to most known weapons. Electrical energy can harm them, however. They lack any intelligence beyond an instinctive attraction to other charged energy sources. Pulse Bamboos produce energy constantly. All excess energy is shed, regardless of who or what may be nearby. So yeah, you can't hit them, but if you charge your beam, they will come running. You can destroy them, but not with the equipment that we currently have. Hmm. Well, nothing ventured. Obviously, there is no fall damage in this game. Come on. There we go. Chozo script translated. The world of living things feels strange to us, we who have existed so long on the edges of time and space. It is clear now that we Chozo can never return to our dimension, not while the Great Poison reaches ever further into the planet. It is so powerful, this creeping evil, that our wills are crumbling and our minds beginning to fail. And so, before it is too late, we now make our last stand. We have begun to build a temple to contain this darkness. At its heart, we will place a cipher, a mystical lock, powered by 12 artifacts, and filled with as much power as we Chozo can harness in our ethereal states. Even when we are done, it may be too late. So that's important, uh, for plot reasons. Um, we're going to need to collect those artifacts in order to uh, open the cipher and uh, do things. Access to Magmore North grant here. Now, if we were to go this way, that's a room that we've been to, but we weren't able to proceed through it. But we haven't been down this path yet, so I'm actually going to go down this path first. That takes us to here. And what is this? A vault of sorts. Hey, Goria guy! Glad you made it. I hope you're feeling better, man. Chozo script translated. Our sanctuary grows by the day. We Chozo know much of technology. We have chosen to leave it behind on this journey. Our home here on Talon 4 will be a place of simplicity. Structures hewn from the stone, bridges woven with branches, hallways caressed by pure waters. We build around the ancient and noble trees, drawing from their strength and giving them our own in return. 
All that is wild will flow around us here. Our race will be just one more group of creatures in the knit of nature. It is our hope that such a state will bring with it great wisdom, a greater understanding of the nature of the universe. Once our city here is complete, we will peer inward and discover the truth. Again, these are not necessarily in order. Um, oh, hey, uh, I'm glad you're feeling better, gory guy. I'm sorry that you can't hit here and watch the stream, but, uh, you know, better that you're uh, doing well. This right here, in order to do this, we got to bomb each one of these. And for the last one, we have to do a bomb jump. A double bomb jump. Which is a trick that we will need to do in the future. Five more missiles. Okay. Bad beetles. Come on. And with that, we have come full circle back into this room. Now, we're going to loop around again. See, with that nest destroyed, they won't spawn. Which gives us time to do this. Oh, crap. Oh, peas. Sam's getting a little hung up on the world geometry there. Here we are, missile expansion acquired. Can never have too many missiles. We're up to 30. There's a save station there, but uh, we're gonna skip it. Yes, scan data. All the troop movements analyzed. Okay, yep, I know. I, I gotta go to Magmore. I, I, I'm aware. I'm, I'm on my way, actually. Ah! Let's see what you made me do, game. And that's. 35? And again, remember that uh, water no longer hurts us, so we can go swimming if we want. So I'm sure this looks familiar. This is where we fought that big machine. Which, now that I think about it, I think I forgot to scan the machine. If I miss 100% scans because of that, I would be very annoyed. Anyway, we couldn't get into here before because we needed the morph ball. And that just leads us right to here. 
now we will head to Magmore. Magmore is kind of not really a destination, it's more like a hub. There's like no boss down here, and we pretty much just use it as a way of getting from point A to point B. In this case, our actual destination is Fendrana Drifts. I mean, I can ride those elevators down if I really want to, but... Magmore, obviously, all about the heats and the fires. Let's hit the save station real quick. Okay, Grisby, Subvolcanic Carrion Feeder. Carapace can be breached by missiles. I mean, that's true of a lot of things. The Grisby's carapace has been fused together by superheated air. The barrier stands up to everything but concussive blasts. Its intelligence is limited to instinctive stab through banners. So basically shoot them with missiles. Burrower, tunneling insect predator. The burrower is similar to the beetle, though it prefers to spend more time underground. It seeks seismic disturbances that surfaces to attack. It has enough cunning to realize when something is too large for it to handle. Beyond that, it is fairly ignorant. When it lacks in brains, it makes up for an aggression. It pretty much can only hit them when they jump out. And here we go with Magmore Caverns proper. That's not what I wanted. Okay. Try to focus on the giant monster trying to eat. Magmore, fire-breathing serpent that dwells in lava. Magmores prefer extreme heat zones and are susceptible to frigid attack forms. Sightless, they navigate the lava currents using their sonar receptors. Magmores have a keen sense of smell, enabling them to pinpoint targets with startling accuracy. You can actually stand like I am, uh, just out of their range. Huffer, unstable gas-filled organism, will rupture on contact. Contact. Puffers fill their body with lethal metavitrium gas and float about in search for food. If ruptured, the gas within the puffer is violently released. Despite their fragile bodies, puffers are aggressive hunters. The, the gas cloud they release on death is often fatal to, cre to the creature that brings them down as well. So, more annoying enemies that, like, when you kill them, they make the poop clouds that you can't want. What is that? It's a chosen artifact. You can't get it, though. But it's here. So, if we ever have the ability to get it. I'm like 90% convinced now that I was supposed to scan. 
part of that machine and you fail to uh, miss 100% scans because that really annoying with that. But, you know, such as Triclops, hard shelled creature with powerful jaws. The Triclops is a hunter gatherer. It collects small creatures and bits of food stuff, then deposits them elsewhere for later consumption. The hard tripartite mandibles that it uses to move earth and rock are quite strong and difficult to escape once snared. So, here's how you do this. Lay a bomb. Hopefully before they grab you. Otherwise they'll just spit you out. So you gotta be kind of careful moving around in there. There. It's another missile expansion. Hooray! We're up to 40 now. I can at least get all my items. Or, knowing my insanity, I'll just replay it off camera for hours to get back to where I was with that one scan. Like, you guys have no idea what this is going to do. So, so much. It takes an awful long time for those puffer, puffball things to go away, and I just fell off. Well, that's lovely, isn't it? Okay, come on, Samus, bring your A game. Or your C game, that's good too, I guess. There is another upgrade in this room. Uh, an another artifact, in fact, but we can't. Well, we can travel through it. It requires a lot of blind jumping and stuff. You don't have the right upgrades.
Okay, immersion pistons are leaching power from the magma pools as planned. Geothermal power source is promising. Recommend energy command deactivate central dynamo and switch to geothermal power at once. Geothermal power routing to the station is complete. Unstable magma flow is a concern. Remove tower from geothermal grid if fluctuations exceed safety levels. Local crystal formations possess low phazon residue. They do have high value to the monks of Grandahine. However, recommend processing of crystal for that market once phazon operations cease. And report any sign of magma predator activity to security central at once. Okay, so I will be right back, guys. Ah! So, let's get back to it. And... All right, remember the bomb double, the double bomb jump. Ah. Oh, okay, I can destroy it. Okay. Alright. There. There we are. So, another energy tank. And going to Fendrana. Fendrana, at least this side of it, uh, you'll understand what I mean by that, uh, is my favorite area of the game. It's very chill, relaxing, cool. This and you means that literally. Literally, obviously, like, this is the ice area. Ice sculptures here, and just missile through. Hmm. 
Okay. Flickerbat. Scavenger with optical camouflaging that renders it invisible to the naked eye. Flickerbats are deceptive creatures. The only way to track them reliably is with X-ray imaging. They fly ceaselessly, hunting insects and other small prey that float on the air currents. Flickerbats tend to fly in cyclical hunting patterns using primitive sonar to navigate. They're not actually that big. Okay. Radion. Okay, yes. Show me where the sa save station is. Yeah, I, I actually already know that. Crystallite. Territorial cold weather scavenger. The shell of a crystallite reflects beam weapons and can only be cracked by a concussive blast. That's not actually true. They hang upside down in an ice cave during their larval stage. Moisture runs off its body and forms the hard ice shell, which the crystallite retains for the rest of its life. So use missiles. No, no, there you go. Okay, so that unlocks the door. Now, you can probably hear the power up here. Okay. These require another weapon to break it. Might as well go get our save on. New personnel must report to the South Research Facility. Failure to report will be penalized by a 30% ration cut and extra duty. Western Temple is in Phase 2 lockdown. All projects are postponed. Under no circumstances are personnel to attempt access. This is a scatter bomboo. Pulsing tendrils of energy extend from creature's body. Like all bomboos, these creatures can only be harmed by electrical energy. Proximity to these life forms may result in electrical visor interference. It is possible to avoid engaging scatter bomboos by rolling into the morph ball and slipping between the rotating energy streams. Well, I mean, if you're good at the game, I guess it's possible. Uh, and that's what happens if they get too close. That's what they were talking about, the electrical interference. Okay, baby she-goth. Glacial predator. Ice shell protects vulnerable dorsal area. Young she-goths grow a resilient shell of ice on their backs, which serves to protect a layer of vulnerable flesh. With this being their only weak point, baby she-goths will turn quickly in order to not allow predators the opportunity to strike at their backs. Powerful hunters, they fire bursts of ultra-cold gas at potential prey, then feast on their frozen victim. Sounds like fun. Let's try it. I feel bad about killing this. this is so But Samus is as Samus does.
There is an extremely hard to find spider ball trap out there, uh, which we will need later. Now you may think that this looks exactly like a burrower, and you'd be right. This is an ice burrower, a burrower adapted to sub-freezing climates. A hardy life form, the ice burrower has adapted to the frigid climate of Frendrana. It spends most of its time tunneling through the frozen soil, but will occasionally surface to attack passersby. It's exactly the same thing, except pellet swapped, but it counts as a separate creature. And they can be kind of hard to find if you miss them until late game. Okay. Now, that leads us to this door. Avoid all the bamboos. Ice Shriek Bats. Ice encased ceiling dweller. Like standard Shriek Bats, these creatures are easily spotted with thermal imaging. They roost on cave ceilings, subsisting on insects, reptiles, and small mammals. Fiercely territorial, they will dive bomb anything that wanders here. Due to a glitch in the game, they will never respawn. So if you miss them and they attack you, uh, yeah, you can just shit out of luck. Poor little guys. New lore entry. None know if our temple, the Cradle, will prove powerful enough to contain this evil forever. How can we Chozo hope for it to remain intact when that which it guards rises in the darkness, growing always stronger? The fate of this world rests with the gathering of artifacts we call the Cypher, but even it is not all-powerful. It is strong, yes, an enchanted hole made of twelve links. Still, it is finite in its reach, and we who guard it are slowly succumbing. When our vigilance crumbles away into madness, the Cypher will be exposed, and the fate of Talon Four will be beyond our influence. Deep words, man. This hanging rock structure appears to have a weak spot near its base. Some stalactites can be dislodged from ceilings, allowing them to be used as platforms to cross to un otherwise unreachable areas. Fortunately, you need to hit them from the right angle, and the right angle from this, to this one is up there, and we can't get to it because we need double jump. Okay. So, instead, go down there. Okay. Now the fun begins. Okay, I actually did it. Platform realignment successful. It's everybody's favorite first person jumping puzzles. This is one of the most fun upgrades you get in this game. 
the boost ball. I'll show you what it does. It lets you do uh, total sick Tony Hawk tricks. Oh, and I forgot it shows over. Okay. Many Chozo have gone beyond now, and this is a mercy. Those of us who remain suffer in dimensional flux, drifting helplessly across time and space, guided by unseen and inexorable currents. The Chozo who cling to sanity fight the tide, but our minds are weakening. Soon we will be all like the Turned, Chozo who have been utterly corrupted by the Great Poison. The Turned still hold to their Chozo forms, but their minds are black with fell intentions. Gone is their respect for life. They honor only destruction, and seek to disrupt the artifacts holding the Great Poison at bay. All life taunts them, and they do not rest. Before long, they will be all that remain of the Chozo here. Yeah, but what does that have to do with me? Yeah, don't. Yep, half bites. Yep, there's a half point, right? Hey, it's that guy again. So, we need to head back to the Talon Overworld. Actually, another exit out of here. Over here. I'm going to do it without that. Ah, stress factions. That doesn't look funny. Good to know. I think this is a shortcut. 
This might actually be a long cut. But we're all having fun, right? For some reason it takes a long time for drops from the bag horse to show up. Whee. Okay, so that's access to Talon over West. This is a place we can't get to. The elevator to the Talon Overworld. Zoomers, it's been a while. Don't forget about this upgrade on Heath Bridge. Damn beetle nest down there. Whoops. Stuck on world geometry. I don't know if this looks familiar to you, but it should. This is back near the beginning of the game when we started. I'm gonna take a short detour. Yep, yeah, it is, I know. Vicious predators. Very scary. That's another missile expansion down. Uh, I want to go over here real quick. This is an area that we won't be actually going to until much later. But... Get 
Flying Pirate. Pirates trained and equipped for airborne assault. Flying Pirates are extremely agile in the air, but the heat signatures of their jetpacks can be tracked with thermal imaging. While their missiles are extremely potent, their jetpacks can be even more so. If the pack fails, they will make a suicide strike. We're not going to deal with them right now. But... Down the road, we're going to have to. And that's the only place in the game that I know of where you can scan them easily while they're on the ground and not moving and not trying to kill One last thing before we save at our gunship. Did it again. Come on, Sans. Come on, Sans. Put your head in the game. We went down here earlier, but the door was locked. Well, now we have a key. Call the missing watch. Empty hallway that serves no purpose other than buffering. Come on. There you go. New Laura Tree. As we have done for millennia, we chose to work constantly on our statuary. The statues are our sentinels, blind but ever watchful. They are, and have always been, repositories for our most precious secrets and strongest powers. The crafting of each is a long and sacred process, performed only by those chosen who have lifetimes of experience in such things. We have left these relics on planets across the solar system. Some are merely reminders, silent emblems of the Chozo that serve as icons of peace in lands that know only war. Others wield subtle strength, exerting their influence in ways beyond the understanding of mortal creatures. Still others are guardians of our secret ways, and these can be as terrible as they are beautiful. Those who respect and honor these relics will know the friendship of the Chozo. Those who do face or destroy them will know our wrath, unfettered and wrong. So Chozo statues are a big thing in Metroid games. Usually the Chozo statues are where you get your upgrades. Uh, they'll be holding a sphere that you shoot turns into the item. Okay, the congregation of artifacts that holds the Great Poison at bay still holds strong. Fearful of the potential within the artifact temple, the invaders known as Space Pirates tried to destroy it, only to fail in every attempt. We scattered the artifacts across the planet for their protection, and only a few have fallen into invader hands. Failing to understand them, they now seek to unmake them. Again, they fail. They are right to fear these things. Great power sleeps inside them. Prophecy calls for their union, come the day that the unholy worm is met by the great defender. We can only hope that the artifacts are not destroyed by the invader, for then all will be lost. So we do what we can to preserve the artifacts, and to guide the newborn to them. Time wanes with our souls, yet hope remains. So this is kind of an endgame thing, but we might as well get a start on it. Hey, yep. <laughs> Chozo Artifact Acquired. This is the Artifact of Truth, the first of twelve. Collect it, then scan the totems here for clues on the locations of the remaining artifacts. Together, the artifacts will open the path to the center of the impact crater. So... That's one artifact I'm doing. Okay, new artifact center. A sun chamber high atop our ruined home became the nest of a great beast and a source of corruption. Many Chozo spirits have been drawn to this tainted place. Release their bond on the world to claim the artifact of the wild. 
The artifact of truth has been returned. Okay, new artifacts of truth. Invaders have claimed Fendrana as their own. A tower sits atop their fortress. Collapse it to reveal the chamber where the artifact of Elder is held. The heat of Magmor was a test for many warriors. A shrine in their honor holds the artifact of strength. In one of Talon's far corners, a grove of life lies. Reveal the pillar beneath the waves to find the artifact of Chosen. You will notice that not all of these are active. So we're not going to get all of the clues. Within the ruins of our home, we honor our fallen elders in a great hall. A chamber beneath the statue holds the artifact of the world. There is a tower within the ruins where light always shines. Move through the waters there to find the artifact of life giving. A tall cave stands at Fendrana's edge. Seek the unseen entrance at its top to find the artifact of spirit. So, the gimmick here, each one of those had a, a room name that was uh, highlighted in a different color. That's a hint as to the actual name of the chamber that has that artifact. For instance... Uh, let's go over to Chozo Ruins. There's a sun chamber. One of those clues said something about a sun chamber. So, that's where the artifact that that clue was talking about is at. Now, we don't have access to that for reasons that, uh, you know, we'll find out later. But... Uh, eventually we will be able to access it, and when we do, we can go there and find that artifact. And... I was gonna say, but actually we're very close to our next destination, so let me do that, if it's what I think it is. It'll be just a minute, and then I'll save. Okay. Sandstone, that means bombs. And that leads us to this door. Which I assume is in it. A more annoying than okay. And that leads us back to this platform behind our ship that we couldn't previously. Base jump boots. Nice. Now, the space jump in Super Metroid lets you jump infinitely. In this game, it just gives you a double jump, but the double jump is really useful. Let's go ahead and save. Okay. Now that we've got the space jump, we've got a lot more that's opened up to us. Could go back to Magmore for the 
way we came in. But let's head back to the ruins real quick. The elevator! Yeah. Oh, hey, remember this guy? Boosting through those things usually ensures that you take minimal damage. So, yep, I... In here, there's a couple of things that we missed because we weren't able to use bombs or the boost ball. There's one of them. Yes, you're very, very frightened, Mr. Bug. Missile expansion. And I believe there's another one on the other side, too. Nope. Okay, and that's a spider ball track that we can't. Boosting trick does not work once they are planted. You can see why fighting everything all the time can get tedious very quickly. There are two more missile upgrades in this room, specifically, that we cannot get yet. We'll get them in time. Profit to see draws closer. Uh -huh. Yep. Okay. You warn will descend from the sky. Uh, hashing supports the path. We are both the newborn and the hatched, but okay. So yeah, we can't go through that. 
for obvious reasons. We need the grapple beam upgrade to do that. But we can't go fast. Open. Now we can just walk through that. I do not think that we can get anything yet. Now with the space jump we can make this a lot easier. Also, if I fuck it up, which I almost always do, I can recover. Another missile expansion. There's nothing we can do. Alright, so turn around. Sun Chamber. I don't think we can do anything in the Sun Chamber yet because we need the. Uh... We need a different upgrade to get into it. So, because the path is blocked off by vines now. So, until we have the Spider Ball. Sounds like they're having fun back here. You had to scan like either above it or below it to get the proper scan on that. So, sigh. I'll probably just replay this off screen. 
can get back to it with that contact. Because while that sounds like a lot of work, this game's actually really fun, so I don't mind having to play some of it. Okay. Back to Magmore. Magmore, more like more mag less, am I right? <laughs> nice try. That's nature. That's number eight, but you don't really get them in order, so, like, I mean, who cares? Now that we have space jump, we can do that. We don't have to stuff here. Music is recycled from uh, Lower Warfare uh, Super Metroid and kicks ass. It's not an opinion, that's a fact. <laughs> God's work can't do it. Doing it badly. Space jump gives you a lot more mobility, but it also makes me really impatient, so I tend to fall. Here. Could go up from here too on these platforms over on the side, but uh, there's nothing we can do there to we have. Uh, actually, I might be able to do some stuff for you. Okay, spinner device. Generate uh, generator belts and spinner can be activated by rapid rotational force. Use the boost ability of morph ball when inside a spinner to activate your And 
and collapsible suspension bridge is functional but requires power. Go. That gives us a suspension bridge. Suspended. That gives us access to slip. With oh, what's that? A cohozor. strength. This, by the way, is what a Chozo looks like more or less. They're bird people. So this is Vendesio, which is vulnerable to a much more powerful bird. Now, Back to Fendrana. We're at seventy five missiles. Not bad at all, but I think, guys, while it has been fun, we're gonna have to call it because I don't know when we'll hit another save point. And, uh, wait, did I scan this one? I did not. Ballistic support re personnel report to research lab Hydra. Lockdown containment plan 3A in effect until further notice. So, there we go. Um, yeah, uh, our next goal is to get to the Chapel of the Elders, which we will do through the one blue door here that we haven't gone to. So, that one right there. We'll go through it. We'll get to the Chapel of the Elders. We'll do stuff there, there will be things, there will be more monsters, I will probably swear a lot because there's going to be tough monsters, and it's going to be cool. Uh, you guys are going to like it. Um, thank you for watching this. I will probably replay all of this off stream just to get that one scan that I am pretty certain that I missed. Um, I will research it just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that there is a scan. Um, so I'll probably do that off screen before the next uh, session. Um, this is probably going to be a three session game. Uh, my best time on Metroid Prime is around the uh, six hour mark, and uh, a more average time is more like 10. Uh, so. Like, you know, I'll, I'll probably be hitting, like, uh, closer to, uh, closer to 10-ish, but, you know, we'll see. Um, so probably, probably three sessions of this, uh, so next week we'll continue this with part two. Um, thank you guys for watching, uh, until next time, uh, let's quit to DOS.